Hi there. In our previous lesson, we showed you an experiment that we asked you to try in your own classrooms. I'm sure you're as anxious as I am to see John's results. So let's go to the lab immediately to have a look. Hi, Diasha. I want to show you the results of the silver tree experiment. They're really exciting. Have a look here. The colorless silver nitrate has changed color. It's got a pale blue. And look what's happened to the copper wire. It's got a wonderful precipitate of silver particles on it. Can you see that? This means that we have a displacement reaction. At last we found an element that is less reactive than copper. What's happened is that the copper has displaced the silver out of solution. That means that the solution has gone the famous blue color that is characteristic of copper ions. The silver has been deposited onto the wire, giving us that wonderful silver tree effect. If you got the task questions right, well done. Thanks, John, for those fantastic results. And congratulations to all of you who got this right. As with all experiments, we need to have a balanced chemical equation. And that's what we're going to do now. The chemical equation for this reaction is copper plus silver nitrate becomes silver plus copper nitrate. To balance this equation, we have to add two silver nitrate particles to the left of the equation and two silver atoms on the right. This gives us Cu plus 2AgNO3 becomes 2Ag plus CuNO32. This displacement reaction also shows that silver is less reactive than copper and we can slot it into our reactivity series. In today's lesson, we will be keeping ourselves busy with a brand new idea. The thermal stability of metals. Metals that are highly reactive form strong bonds with oxygen or any other non-metal to form compounds. It is very difficult to remove the metal from such a compound and heating cannot separate the elements. These reactive metals are described as being thermally stable. Metals that are less reactive can be separated from their compounds by heating them strongly. The compound decomposes into its component elements. These metal compounds are thermally unstable. Do you remember that we looked at how metals occur in nature in our first series on chemical reactions? For example, we learnt that gold is found as a pure element in the Earth's crust. This means that it forms no stable bonds with oxygen or any other non-metal and is less reactive than most elements. Aluminium, on the other hand, is found only as the ore bauxite. It has to be refined to aluminium oxide before it can be smelted into pure aluminium. We can say that aluminium is more reactive than gold. In this lesson, we will test the thermal stability of four metal oxides. If the compounds separate during these experiments, we call the reaction a decomposition reaction. This will only happen if the metals are not thermally stable or not very reactive. Here is what we would like to achieve in today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to 1. Define the term thermal stability. 2. Describe the results of the decomposition reactions that you see. 3. Write balanced chemical equations for the reactions that you see. 
These are the oxides we will be testing. Calcium oxide, lead 2 oxide, copper 2 oxide, and mercury 2 oxide. These compounds are all combinations of a metal and oxygen. So if they separate into their component elements, we can expect oxygen to be a product of the decomposition reaction. Can you still remember how we tested for oxygen as a product during a reaction? Let me refresh your memories. That's right. We found that if you bring a glowing splint close to the mouth of a test tube containing oxygen, the glowing splint started to burn. This is a positive test for oxygen. Now that we know how to test whether oxygen is being given off as a product during our reactions, we can go to the lab and see what John's cooking up. Hi guys, we've been heating some calcium oxide here over the Bunsen burner. But nothing's happening. That's right, Seppel. Nothing's supposed to happen. You see, calcium is a reactive metal, so the metal oxide is very thermally stable. It doesn't break down. Maybe you should write down some results here. We're going to be testing a couple of metal oxides. I'm going to get the next one ready. It's lead oxide. And I'm going to put it into the tube in the place of the calcium oxide. Watch carefully. Nothing's happening. Again, this must mean that lead 2 oxide is thermally stable, right? That's right, Seppel. Although lead is one of the less reactive metals, only under extremely high temperatures will lead 2 oxide decompose. Surely copper oxide should show some results. I mean, copper is the least reactive of the metals we've used, right? That's right, Seppel. We're going to heat it up, and I've connected it to a tube here so that when it's heating, the oxygen that we suspect will escape from here will be collected. We'll then be able to check whether it really is oxygen. The gas will push down the water and we'll see the bubbles of gas forming in that test tube. Let's have a look and see what happens. Seppel, can you see that where the black copper oxide has changed color? It's starting to look a little bit like copper here. Wow. Can you see the bubbles of gas displacing the water? Mm. Right, now we need to capture that gas and then we're going to test it with the splint. Will you get that splint ready? Take that splint out of the flame. Remember we want a glowing splint to test for oxygen. Right, let's put the glowing splint into the gas jar quickly. Let's see, there it reignites. This is a positive test for oxygen. So, copper oxide decomposed into its two components, copper and oxygen. The vendor people of the Limpopo province have been doing this for years. The only thing that we've got left to do is to write the balanced equations for these reactions. Diasha, can you take care of that, please? Sure, John. We only saw reaction when copper 2 oxide decomposed. Let's take a look at what the chemical equation for that would be. Copper 2 oxide decomposes into copper and oxygen. To balance the reaction, we need to have two copper 2 oxide particles on the left and two copper atoms on the right. Now, if we have another look at the substances we said we are going to test, you may be wondering, what happened to mercury oxide? Well, mercury is a highly poisonous metal. When in a vapor state, it is easily absorbed. This is a very dangerous experiment and should not be done without good safety precautions. John is going to do an experiment for us. So let's go and take a look at his lab. Today we're going to do an experiment with mercury 2 oxide. It's very dangerous 
That's why I've got gloves and I'm going to be wearing a mask when I heat it up. Remember, don't do this on your own. Here is the mercury 2 oxide. You can see it's an orange powder. I'm going to place the Bunsen burner underneath it and start heating. At the same time, I'm going to get the splint burning to see if I can get any oxygen gas being given off. Watch carefully. You'll start to see some vapor forming over there, some silver vapor. The color of the oxide is also changing. Let's see what happens when we test the gas. There you go, the oxygen is clearly present. The glowing splint is glowing even brighter. And we've got a deposit of silver mercury. I'm putting a stopper on it so I can show you this a little bit more clearly. Not only has the oxide changed color, but we've got a silver pattern here. This clearly shows that mercury is a very unstable oxide, and so it must be an unreactive metal. That's all for now. Thanks. Wow, wasn't that a fantastic experiment? Remember, this experiment should always be done in a controlled environment by an experienced chemist, like John. Let's take one more look at the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Two mercury oxide decomposes into two mercury atoms and oxygen. Before I say goodbye, I would like you to think about this. What do the results of the decomposition reactions we observed tell us about the reactivity of lead, mercury and copper? We will discuss the answer to this task in our next lesson. See you then. Yeah.